Welcome to the Daily Examiner. My name is Eli Ikile. I'm so, so pleased and thankful that you're here to come on the show. If you, if you can, before we get stuck in even more, this is one of those ones where you want to share it around. Let's get the word out there. Let's have a discussion, have a talanoa korero about some of the things that have been going on. So yeah, I did want to have a chat about this because I, I'll be working throughout the day. Again, I start up around about 6 a.m., get home like, reasonably in the afternoon sometimes you know so sometimes it's just hard it's, a, it's just hard to get a hold of the knowledge but when this came through to me when the, my colleague actually said it through to me it was it was it was quite shocking this is this was an absolute shocking thing to see and witness today so you've got the SIS that's that's the secret intelligence service of New Zealand that's a secret Gosh, I don't want to say secret police, but that is the intelligence services of New Zealand, the secret intelligence services. And they are now saying, they are now basically going out to Kiwis to say, right, New Zealanders, you now have to report on other New Zealanders. Sorry, they didn't say the word have to, but their their messaging is very clear. And did you notice in the first part of it, they talked about family, friends, family, friends. And, and what, what drove me, my first one that's, the first thing that I noticed with that news article was that you should be able to report any sort of incitement to violence or some sort of violent act anyway. So that's already in there. That's already in the laws. You, you, you've got it where you've got a situation where, where, where that's already in the laws where you can call up the police, you can call up whoever in order to stop someone from engaging in a violent or, or terrorism attack. You, that's already in there. So why do you need this extra part? Why do we need the SIS engaging in it? Why do you need the government also lining with it? And of course, you may not have noticed that person right at the end. That person is Professor Paul Spoonley. He and I debated in the Wellington University a couple of years ago. And he is, he's very strong about basically punishing you for any speech that is determined or deemed to be hate speech by any government who's in place at that time. He wants those hate speech laws. He wants to be able to attack you and be able to make you punished for things saying. And I'll go, all right, let me go back to that first one. Family and friends. One, you've already got, you've already got tools in place in order to to let someone know that someone's about to uh, play or, or about to pull out a violent attack they're about to engage in extremist violence there's already those motions in place you can already do that so what you know what is this about the the special intelligence service has now got on there and again i'm not sure if you note this but when the when the mainstream media journo was putting it out there do you know, you may notice that he spoke white. He said white. You know, he said white. He, he didn't actually talk about any other skin color. So, for example, Black Lives Matter, which has been shown to be a hijacked form of the black community and is now basically LGBTQI+, but does engage in hate crimes and things of those nature, didn't talk about that. Spoke specifically about the white people. If you're white, then you are very much targeted for this extreme ideology. What about me? Because I'm not white. And I do hold that you should love your country, you should love your family, you should engage. I, I believe I am a Christian, I believe that you should follow your faith. Does that somehow make me also a target for these people as well? And this video was extraordinary, because it, it, it started with the element about about family and friends. And then it went into and it showed you the secret intelligence service boss up there speaking. It was an absolute extraordinary thing that you're talking about things that we saw in 1930s Germany. We saw it in the 1940s and such uh, Stalinism. You know, when you had neighbors snitching on neighbors and snitching on family. And those people were just taken away. Why? Because they were terrorists of the state. They were they were going to engage in violence against the state. They, a lot of the reasons that were given in those times that we saw in terms of communism and the fascism, when we saw those people being taken away, a lot of them were about the fact that they were, or the fact, or 
the fact that they came against the policies at the time, which were about, oh, these are enemies of the state. They are going to engage in violent attacks upon us. So we've got to go, jump in there fast. I, 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 I struggled in the afternoon when I saw this because, and I'll be honest, let me be transparent, I felt a little bit guilty as well because 2020, 19, 18, I was very strongly pushing the, my, my campaign slogan was, this year we win back what we lost or we lose the rest. And I kept on saying that. I said, this is the worst government since 1852 Constitution Act days. This is the worst of the worst. We've never had as brutal or undemocratic and anti-democratic government as what we have right now. And it feels like I just, I just wasn't loud enough. It feels like I just wasn't able to get that message out there enough. And I'm, you know, I... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I can't really apologize. I did the best that I could do, but it feels like it was just too little, too late, maybe. And in the desperation to get out there, and of course, we saw in 2020 when Labour cleaned up, and everything that myself and, and my team were saying at the time, it's coming to pass. Most of it has. I. I don't know if I can say that I genuinely thought that we would lose our democracy. But I have to say, at this point in time, I have never been as alarmed about the government overstepping, about the the ideas of secret police and snitching between family and neighbours and Kiwi against Kiwi than I feel right now. And at the same time, this comes in the wake of the, what is it, the Fire and Fury taxpayer-funded documentary. And of course, yesterday we had, a, I believe last night or the night before, we had another taxpayer-funded documentary. Again, pushing these elements about, oh, you know, the, these people are, are uh, radicalizing. They are, the, they are the extremists that we've got to look out for. So who are these extremists that the secret intelligence service and the government, New Zealand government, Labour Party, who are these extremists that they're talking about? And I think that could be also something to look at. Oh, okay, well, all right, so who are these people? Uh, and, and I think that's important to have a look at because obviously we want to make sure that, that these aren't extremists. So who are these extremists? Let's have a look. You can draw people in in lots of different places. And each of the platforms are used in different ways. Hello, friends. As you can see, I'm working on my weekly bag. What is known internationally as the kind of trad wife set of viewpoints, which is white Christian, a lot of pseudo Celtic, pseudo Nordic ideologies behind it. They use Pinterest and Instagram to draw in other women who are interested in interior design, children's clothing, knitting, healthy food for children. And it does draw people in towards a set of white nationalist ideas. I mean, it's relatively easy to see. If you see a very beautiful, fair-skinned, blonde or red-haired child with beautiful braiding in her hair and some flowers, just step back a little bit. <laughs> Which is really distressing because that's my heritage. All cooking with the girls. That's the taxpayer-funded documentary, or, or what they call the documentary, that was there, and that was about who is radicalizing. That excerpt there was sent in by Diwa De Boer. He is, of course, the man who had the police slam down his doors, I believe about a dozen of them, fully armed, came into his home while he was sitting at dinner. Uh, the, the children were really scared. You know, they, the, the police absolutely frightened them and for nothing more than checking that he did not have a .22 or a small little ball rifle, which he never hid, that he consistently, well, that he had said to the gun uh, submissions that, that he had. Uh, he is that one. And... And so what they're talking about there is those who radicalize are 
are white, love family, good food, uh, kids, children, mm, and, and love New Zealand. They're nationalists. What's going on? What's going on? Because if that is what it takes to be referred to as a radical extremist, that is so incredibly dangerous that, it, 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 you know, it's, an, it's absolutely insane. I have to say it. That is an insane judgment upon New Zealanders. And if you notice, the head of the disinformation project actually uses the wording trad white. I'm not sure if you notice that. She says trad white. Trad white. It's a very leftist term in itself. It means if you're a traditional Caucasian person. And I, I can't stand that. Why, why are whites the only ones who are trad? I love being Pacific Amari and English. I'm traditional. I love my family. I love New Zealand. Both my grandfathers fought for this nation in World War II. They fought against Hitler so that we could have our today in order to speak freely and be free. What they did not fight for was to be sitting there and told that they are radical because they decided to stand up for their nation, their freedom, their country, their family. I cannot stand what they are doing to our people. They are, they are dividing New Zealanders up. And now they are telling us that, hey, you over there, you Kiwi, you look out for that Kiwi. That Kiwi's dodgy. And how do we find out our criteria in order to know who's dodgy? Just go to the single source of truth. And how is that a conspiracy theory when we're using their words, when we're using their sentences and their quotes, and we're using their taxpayer-funded documentary? The only thing that's not theirs is the funding that they get because we fund them. I just, I can't, I cannot, I cannot believe that as New Zealanders, we now have a system that seeks to say that the radicals, the extremists, are those who are Caucasian, those who are traditional, those who love family, those who love children, those who love the, the very nature of freedom itself, to engage in speech, to engage in free speech, the discourse, that in order to to fix the problems of New Zealand. We must be able to have speech and discussion. I need to be able to say that that's racist, that if you say that one person, one vote is not it, and if you're saying, no, democracy is more nuanced, or if you're saying there's a new form of democracy coming, we need to be able to have free speech that we can go out there, and a, and a, palangi, a white person needs to be able to say that's wrong and that's racist without themselves being called racist. the the it's it's absolutely extraordinary the disgusting areas of which they're going to and and by the way can i add that there is actually something else in there as well because you know i've shown you i've shown you the the who, who the radicals are according to the disinformation project this is who the radicals are and i look i'm sure i'm sure that the disinformation project people themselves, I'm sure that they do not have any very odd, very strange rituals that they might engage in, right? Because the only strange radical extremist radicals are those who love their families, love their kids, love their country. Surely that's them. So I'm sure that they also go up to the next scrutiny, right? Let's have a look. I have a process, it sounds really silly, but as a historian, on a normal day, I might be going to the archives to do archival research. And when you go into the archives, lots of people don't know this, but um, you're supposed to have clean hands because you're touching um, you know, archival things. And so you go and wash your hands. So it's quite ritualistic. I've washed my hands and I take a big deep breath and I acknowledge that some of the things I'm gonna be reading might be upsetting to me. And then I do the same when I finish with that text. I sort of close it and I breathe and I go and wash my hands again. 
And I find that really helps me keep a sense of separation. And so I actually do the same thing when I do my work at the computer. But yeah, I mean, it is hard to talk about with my husband and my children. It's not that you're lonely, but you're very alone. Profoundly alone. I have a Sri Lankan counsellor who's generally helping me with stuff. Um, and Kate has her own counsellor. <laughs> so we, we cope, but you can't, you just, for a variety of reasons, I mean, nobody would understand in the first place. I have two showers a day because you try to wash away <laughs> the sins of your work, knowing full well that you do it for the right reasons, but the vulgarity, the venom, the viciousness is constant. And it's white hot. In that evening shower, which is a hot shower, it's a long one. I, you know, my Instagram is full of dogs and cats. It's because the algorithm has got used to my late night scrolling and joy scrolling. Hey, hey, absolutely, you know, because it's totally, you know, again, Christians, white people, lovers of family, lovers of country and nation, you're strange, but ritualistically wiping your hands in a shallow dish of water two times to make sure that the sin of what you're reading somehow be is, is exhumed from your body, whatever that means, whether, it, you know, that's not strange that doesn't somehow qualify you for maybe an oddity now i don't care but what i'm bringing up is the fact that that somehow the disinformation people that they are saying they are very clear by saying that the radicalizers are white traditional christian people who love the family and, and look after and then you've got the other disinfo what, what do they refer to him as the disinformation specialist what does it even mean? I have no idea what that means because I, I tell you, in, in crazy stuff. So what is his one? His one is he has two showers a day and he says that, that it is it is a very, very hot shower. Now, now that gets a little bit more insidious in that, in that sense. Are you saying that he's having such a hot shower that it causes him pain to somehow deal with reading any excerpts that, that he has a shower so hot that it causes her pain to be in there. There's something, there's just something really dark about that. Absolutely dark about that. I, I you know, how how do you equate that? You know, I, again, I don't care. None of us should care, but it becomes important because the frame of their referencing white Christian people who love their family and country. They are framing the narrative that these are the radicals, these are the extremists. And so we need to have a look at these other areas. I mean, the, 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 the boss of disinformation, she was saying that she even has trouble talking to her children and her husband about it, about that little water ritual that she does. You know, I, get, I don't care. But make no doubt that that, in a sense, is an oddity that we should look. And that ritualistic behavior very very hot shower multiple times a day or that that weird uh, uh what what that uh, water situation twice a, uh, twice reading things that 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 is an oddity that is is in their lives and yet us loving god loving family loving children loving god and, and nation and country you know that that's the weird stuff it's just insane it really is. It's absolutely shocking. And these people are collecting taxpayer money, right? And some of it's indirect because they get paid by, I believe they get paid by the university and the university itself is also getting paid the taxpayer money. How does this go on? How how has, how has how have we allowed this to occur? And when they do, when they want to throw out conspiracy theory, you know, and they, they keep channeling this word towards us as New Zealanders, you know, and you look at things like the the COVID that they want the they want that COVID laws, 
the laws that give them unprecedented power. They want that until 2025. And this is the same group who, when they first came up with it, were saying, hey, look, we don't want this power, but we have to have it to save our people from lockdown. And they, they vomited that out. It was ad nauseum. They kept on pumping it into our ears, the 1 p.m. presses, the fear, the goggles, the experts who've been nothing but incorrect. So they kept on funneling that, and now they want that. And those laws that they have are incredibly invasive, absolutely invasive, as it, it's shocking that they have that. All right, you've got that. You've also got the, you've got that, you've got the hate laws that Kitty Allen will put through before the next election. She will put them through before the next election. Make no doubt of that. They have the numbers. They don't care. And there are even some in the opposition party who will be okay with that. It is, it feels like we're heading towards dystopia. I hate saying that. You know, you had far left extremists, you know, you had people like Byron Clark and you had David Farrier, the fetish filmmaker. You had all these people who were on the taxpayer funded documentary. And and it's there, you know, it's 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 there for everyone to see. I've never been alarmed by the government, not not really. You know, I'd be happy to uh, get it out there. I've been attacked by left, I've I've lost a couple of battles, uh, but but I've never been alarmed. This stuff has me quite alarmed in that environment. So, and we must, we must stand together. These are dark times, extraordinarily dark times, and we've got to be together because we are New Zealanders. And I, I know that the River of Freedom documentary is coming out soon. Can't wait for it. Why? Because it was the most unified it was a it was the most beautiful display of Kiwi unity that I have ever seen. All right, many of you out there know that I I do not I'm not down with the Tino Ranga Tira Tanga movement. That I am that I believe that one vote should be one vote. That all people should be treated equally under the law, equally. But on that, I was proud to stand beside flags that were New Zealand and the Tino Ranga Tira Tanga flag. No problem because we're there to fight for that overarching idea of freedom, of, of the basic tenets of democracy. And to, to be a part of that was extraordinary. So I'm really looking forward to that. There is also something coming out that I'm not allowed to say yet, but that's also going to be quite powerful, very powerful, and it'll be winding its way through very soon. But we've got to stay united. We've got to stay strong. We've got to be together. You'll find that there are people out there who, who are, there is, and I can't say habeas corpus, but I can say that there, there are people who have been locked up for very little reason, people who have spent longer in prison than rapists and killers. And why? Because obviously there's one that I'm thinking of in particular, and that person hasn't been charged for anything violent, as far as I'm aware, hasn't been charged for anything like that, and yet is held even now in indefinite in uh, imprisonment it's absolutely shocking he, look even even people who don't agree with him but i like what brian tamaki did he stood up and he fought back you know and he he got done for that he got thrown into prison for that as well it's extraordinary times that, that we're dealing with it's absolutely fascinating you know it, the wording is extraordinary so anyway i thought one thing that we would do is have a quick look at the the SIS, the Secret Intelligence Service, well, what are they looking at? Because they refer to a document that they let loose. All right. So, you know me, I like to actually look into what people are, what they're actually looking at. You know, and I think that's probably a bit of an important thing. So, let's have a look at it. All right. This is Ki Matara Ki Nga Tohu, Know the Signs, a guide for identifying signs of violent extremism. Just shocking. You know, sometimes I, I, I struggle to have a look at that. All right, so let's have a look at this together. All right, there we go. Uh, at one time, 
well, uh, my belief is at one time New Zealand Secret Intelligence Service was working for us. Uh, uh, it's just extraordinary now that I, I just can't say that anymore. You know, I, I don't believe I don't believe the government anymore. I, I used to take things in merit and at least try to to cross reference them in order to feel comfortable about what they're saying. But now I just default that they're lying. All right, I know I know you do too. Now more than ever, we need to protect. We need to work together to protect each other. Okay, yeah, of course. All right, now let's have a look. Uh, please excuse me. I'm just. I, I see. This is this is actually the first time that I'm looking through this as well. This apparently is a short document. This guide aims to raise awareness of indicators of violent extremism to help people identify some of the key warning signs. Please tell us if you. Please tell us if you see or know anybody behaving in the ways described. All right. Now, a lot of this sounds about right. You know, uh, we aim to help more people understand the threat of violent extremism and how you can report concerning behavior or activities. These indicators are guide rather than checklist. We're asking, we're asking people to report any behaviors or activities they come across that resemble any of the indicators described in this guide. Now, hold fire. So, so again, let's hold fire there. You've already got pathways in which to advise emergency services that someone is about to kill someone or they're about to engage in violence. And and let's not forget that the, the Christchurch coward, that scumbag, the one who killed those people. Now, first off, I don't think it was false flag. I know that some of our people do. I don't. I think it was real. I'm just going to put that out there. The but what I can say is that he got his firearm because of an absolutely pathetic usage or or uh, the what the minimum requirement for investigating whether he should have been given a license was not met. The minimum was not met by the authorities in that place. They failed to do the bare minimum. Right, so when they came to when it, when it was uh, to go to his home for the interview, he said no, and so they met at his workplace. Why on earth would that be the case? If you've got if you are giving someone a firearm license, the big one is that you've got to be able to look at their homes. You've got to go through it, and you've got to see. You've got to get a sense of how they are in their home. They did not do that. They went to the workplace. When it came time for references, referees, those who speak, those who speak uh, in terms of, of looking after, in terms of looking after the character of people, those who you need to discuss it, that the people that they use were online, the they were online characters, online quote unquote friends. They were not actually those people. Sorry, I've got my, my son here who's who's all right, dear good boy. All right, Joe. Thank you, Daddy. All right, good boy. Close the door. Okay. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> so when it came time to get the referees for them, they was not. Uh, they were not one on ones. They were online acquaintances. So the barest minimum wasn't kept, and that's what happened. That's that's not even kept. So why aren't they being looked at? you know, more than white people or Christians or anything like that. It's, it's disgusting how they've gone in. So, okay. Sorry, I just wanted to put that out there. All right, let's get back into it. So, uh, looking at that part there, the individual behaviors, activities listed in this guide are concerning when they occur along our side. These behaviors made on the remote, okay, blah, blah, blah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just snitch on your neighbors. Okay, right, got it. Uh, scale of extremism, blah, blah, blah. I apologize. I'm going blah, 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 because he's, I'm looking at a lot of verbiage. I'm looking at a lot of words that, that, as far as I'm concerned, don't really care about much. Okay. Extreme ideologies can be based on faith, social, or political beliefs that exist on the fringe of society, outside the more broadly accepted views and beliefs of most people. Extremists may seek to radically change may seek to radically change the nature of government, religion, or society, or to create a community based on their ideology. What the? <laughs> you mean like communism? You, you mean like socialism? 
Hey. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. That's that is crack up. So, so if you're seeking to change, what about progressivism and Marxism? What about bringing those in? Hey, what about the Greens? And and to be fair, now most of the Labors, they are they are proud socialists. Just in our turn, twice. Uh, the union, the the socialists, international socialists, the youth international socialist, twice a president of them. <laughs> but apparently, uh, all right, okay, all right, that, uh, dude, okay, and hey. Create a community based on the ideology. Oh, that sounds like a bit of uh, social cohesion, hey? Shocking, just shocking. Violent extremism, belief in violence. Violent extremists take these ideologies further and justify using violence to achieve radical changes. Violent extremists often target the groups that they see as threatening their success of survival or undermining their worldview. Well, I mean, uh, that violence does keep on coming up, which is quite interesting. You'll find that those on the far left are actually okay with violence. They're very strongly about that. It's quite fascinating. And so I, I think there is a bit of a concern there, but of course it is a far left. You know, and and look, I, I, as you look at the the Australian coward, what was it? Was it because he was Australian? Was it because he was a nut job? Was it because he had unresolved grief? Just looking through his idiotic wordings, I've, I have looked at his rentings. A lot of it actually has to do with the fact that he had very much unresolved grief. That's what comes through because he doesn't have, he doesn't have a core ideology. If you look at it, if you know, if you know what an ideology looks like, he doesn't have that. There is no core there. He's an idiot. He's a coward who, who just got a hold of a gun and just went nuts on it. He tried to find something to get over his dad dying, and that was it. As far as, that's what my concern is. All right, and and I think uh, you know. I wish someone had been there to kill him. He needed he needed to die so that those other people would, would live and be survived. But that's not what happened, of course. Uh, so that was the and those other ones. So the other ones that you'll find, I believe it was, for example, the person who was in the New Lynn supermarket, Auckland New Lynn supermarket. And what did he engage in? He's tried to stab people. He got shot for that. And he did be he was killed by the police. Uh, and and that one, of course, was Islam. Now, again, I know some great Muslim people, no problem. But Islam, as a if you go real to the core of the faith, it's not such a great one. All right, and we can argue about that all day. But that's interesting because we won't go with that. It's Christian. It's white, and it's it, yes, Christian and white. Those are the those are the ones that they tend to aim towards. Maybe they should be aiming towards Australians. I don't know, but I think it's stupid anyway. Terrorism refers to acting out on that belief of violence. Terrorist act is defined as a in, as an ideologically, politically, or religiously motivated act that is intended to intimidate a population or to coerce or force the government to do or not to do certain things. Terrorist act could okay. <laughs> All right, look. I, I hope you're watching what I'm reading. A terrorist act could include acts causing death. Or serious bodily injury. That's not what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at the other one. But it isn't necessarily limited to this. Well, <laughs> that's insane. So is it anything? Is that what it is? It's anything. A terrorist could include acts causing death or serious bodily injury. But it isn't necessarily limited to, limited to this. Well then, what is it? What's the criteria? This is absolutely insane. You know, it isn't necessarily limited to this. So it's anything. It's anything that the SIS, the Secret Intelligence Service, deem it to be. Understand motivations behind uh, violent extremism. We use the following framework. Politically motivated, uh, promoting use of violence to achieve change or within an existing political system. That's interesting. Do you remember the violence perpetrated by... The, what I would say, and again, this is, I'm being, my opinion is, uh, the weaponized police force in the Freedom Village. Was that a use of violence to achieve change that was, in terms of that, the, the COVID powers engaged in that? Okay, 
Maybe, maybe not. Uh, identity motivated, promoting the use of violence to advance one's perception of identity and or denigrate others' perceived identities. All right, now there's a bit of concerning there. Now, while they keep that word violent there, maybe my concern again is that one that goes up here could include acts uh, causing death or serious bodily injury, but isn't necessarily limited to this, all right, which means anything. Denigrate others' perceived identities. Does that mean that if I say that my daughter does not want to be in a toilet with a male because the male is saying that he thinks he's a female and so he's just going into the girls' toilets, the girls' change room, he wants to play the girls' soccer team, he wants to play girls' rugby, does that mean that I am denigrating others if I say, no, I do not want my daughter to be having a male, a boy, in her change rooms, in her shower area? Stuff that... Faith motivated. Here we go. Motivated. Promoting the use of violence to advance one's own spiritual or religious objectives. I guarantee you they will run a mile if you use the word Islam. All right. The fact is, is that Islam do get used a lot in terms of terrorists. It, it holds a lot. Uh, Al-Bakir, uh, I believe his name was Al-Bakir uh, Al, Al al-Baghdadi, I think was his name. He was called the scholar. He was at one point the ISIS leader. The Americans said that they killed him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. And he his, his nickname was The Scholar. He was a very ardent student of the Quran and the Hadith. So he, he knew what he was talking about. All right. But but you'll find that mainstream New Zealand mainstream media, New Zealand politicians, New Zealand academics, they will run a mile. They will run a mile. They will not want to even look at the possibility of that being a bit of an issue, all right? Rather than, for example, that thing, all right? That thing up there is something which they hate. And I, I say that, yep, opinion-based, they hate Christianity. They want it gone. Make no mistake. What did Labour do? To all the Christians who voted Labour, what did Labour do? Well, they got rid of the name of Jesus, never been done before. They also mocked. Christ, uh, Easter in that first year, and they do not meet, they do not mention Easter, unless it's got to do with the the Easter bunny and shells and eggs. But they don't even you'll find that they don't mention it at all. Uh, they do mention they go they'll do Mubarak, so they'll look at Eid, they'll make sure that they engage in that and Diwali, those other ones. But they will not go to the Christian religious festivals. They just they won't. All right, so it's just quite fascinating that they do those. So getting back to it. Single issue motivated, promoting the use of violence to achieve a desired outcome to a specific issue. Not sure, but they, okay, okay, yep. PMV, all right, so that's that's what they do there. They're doing their little, that's a little signal that, that discusses the, the different elements of what they refer to as extremism, violent extremism, okay. How we develop these indicators. Each indicator's resource has either been observed or discovered to have happened within New Zealand. Maybe they should all look at the government incompetence or the incompetence of those who are there. Because, for example, the Australian coward, don't forget, he got his tools of murder by an absolute incompetence of going to the minimum investigation for whether he should have a firearms license or not. Where's that? Our NZSIS instigators reviewed New Zealand counterterrorism, go back to 06, identify common behaviors. We then grouped these indicators into seven themes. Again, NZSIS investigators. I'm not sure about this. Let's have a, I just want to look at something. All right, now I'm not sure if you can see what I'm seeing. Oh, you can. <laughs> okay, very good. Oh, oh, hello. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> now, again, I'm finding that the LGBTQIAP plus community, the, or, or the activists especially, all right, that these activists here of that there, they are engaging in more and more anti-family rhetoric, very about violence. They've got no problem with it. That's been shown in New Zealand. Uh, sorry, in America. It's been shown in Australia. They will spit in the face of people they don't like. They will attack family. And even people like Marsha Green, the very strong activists overseas, they have said clearly 
that what they want at the end is an abolishment of the family. They do not want the family unit. They view the family unit as a problem. They hate Christianity. I'll give you that right now. They hate Christianity. The only reason why they'll use Christianity is if they if they piggybacking it on an attack on the family. That's just how they sort of operate. Okay, so that's interesting in itself. All right. So there's no way. So so hear me what I'm saying. So what I'm saying with that regard is what I'm saying there is that is that the SIS will not look at the LGBTQIAP ideology and it will not look at Islam and will not look at any sort of, for example, Maori extremism. All right. So they won't look at those elements there. There are certain groups that they won't go for. All right. And, and yes, yes, I also am aware of, of the AUT scandal that's starting to break now. All right, so that's something that we do need to bring up and discuss also. So, uh, but let's have a look. Let's have a further look into this, into this as uh, SIS stuff. All right, so having a look. Mindset, ideology, unusual behavior, change, association, relationship, security, awareness. Okay, well, all right. Well. So it looks like we're three quarters of the way through. Accesses violent extremist content, consumes violent extremist videos, media, musical messaging. Jeez, well, okay, don't look at your teenagers then. But yeah, I, okay, I'm not sure about that one. That was a bit hard. I mean, video games, music. Uh, if you watch V, V, or or if you watch Candace Owens' mm, uh, Black Lives Matter expose, or if you watch What Is a Woman, is that regarded as extremist? It comes from the Daily Wire. Is that regarded as extremist? Because here, messaging is conveniently put in there. All right, supports the use of violence to further their cause. Considers violence a valid way to further their cause and advance their ideological aims. This may include justifying terrorist attacks or other acts of terrorism. Now, this is interesting. If I support Israel defending herself, is that justifying terrorist attacks? If those people are from Palestine and they, are, they are, for example, when they tunneled under, grabbed some of the Israeli kids, took them back and then chopped their heads off, which happened, you know, and then, of course, the Israelis responded and they went in there and they shot up a couple of places they, they didn't kill any kids none of things like that they they killed some of the palestinian or the the gaza i believe was where they were and that became it was quite violent retribution is that terrorist if i say that yep no that she has a right to defend herself praise act of terrorism and people responsible for violent extremist attack now, I also think that the SIS have probably done a decent job in there because, yes, that is fair. Uh, you'll find that sometimes in terrorist attacks around the place, you'll get uh, you get horrible people saying, oh, that's good, that's good. Disgusting. Very, very disgusting. Uh, but, you know, uh, identifies, at least going to the left-hand side, identifies with a violent extremist cause, possesses or displays imagery and the displays imagery and symbols from known terrorists or violent extremist groups or movements. They may display this, this imagery online or, or real world. Now, I hope that the, I hope that they're going to put. It, I mean, I mean, I would regard, you know, imagery of the most brutal, violent ideology to be obviously the communist flag. Any flag, any communist flag from the USSR or from the Chinese or the China flag. I mean, I would regard that now. But at the same time, I don't mind if you're going to fly that flag. I don't want the other stuff, sure. But I don't hold it to you against it that it's like that. Uh, if someone wants to do a flag of, I don't know, the Crusaders, the Crusaders in the Middle East, I don't mind if you do that. Is that what's going to be? Become fixated on violent extremist ideology views, donates money to violent extremist figures or causes. Again, who's, who's defining that they are extremist? What does that mean? Because I think that's a real interesting part uh, supports oh expresses a willingness or desire to die on behalf of a violent extremist cause i have no desire to but i'll die for my country if someone comes to attack our country i have no desire to uh, i don't want to want to die at all, but i'm prepared to spend my life to protect my family that's what a man does that's what you do when you become a husband and a father you choose death before they are hurt so i'm hoping that they're not actually i'm hoping that they're not doing that views themselves as a defender or savior of their cause so now i'm oh look i'm starting to judge myself on this 
I would say that I am a defender of New Zealand and a defender of conservatism. I'm just really worried that that would be very one day very soon be considered an extremist ideology. That I believe in family and the nation and the faith. You know, uh, here we go. Why is it always near the end that these these dodgy ones come out? Develops a hostile us versus them worldview. Makes dehumanizing a hostile or violent statements against individuals or groups they perceive as the enemy or other. Now that right there is very and again. You know, and, and I said it just before, you know, and, ooh, that is incredibly dangerous, that, that statement. Develops a hostile us versus them worldview. So you've got to, that is extremely concerning. Why? Because on Twitter, and I say this, I say this, and I say it, I've said it to journalists as well. Journalists who follow me, by the way. I say that New Zealand mainstream media is the enemy of the people. I say that because they are not engaging in balance, and that's not a conspiracy theory. They are hooked up to, for example, Covering Climate Now, document the the uh, international treaty, which says that you'll only actually give out news that supports the global alarmism, uh, the climate alarmism narrative. That's what they're signed up to. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's that is literally the treaty that they're signed up to, the Covering Climate Now area. So when I say New Zealand is the mainstream, the New Zealand mainstream media is the enemy of the people, am I therefore engaging in, and then us versus them? Well, I am, because it is, they are not defending us. They're going after farmers. They're going after family. They're going after democracy. How is that, a, a, how is that me making an us versus them worldview? It's, it's absolutely crazy, Juice. What are you talking about? All right, let's have a look. Association and relationships. Uh, behaviors that indicate six out engages with violence. So this is about meeting together. This is actually something which was very big during, oh, I mean, North Korea most most assuredly. Uh, Pol Pot, I'm not sure of, but definitely during Stalinist times and, of course, obviously, the, the 1930s German time, right? So if you gathered together with what the, the state said that you were a terrorist or you were extreme, then, of course, you'd be aimed at, you'd be recorded and be gone. We did see that, of course, as well. The police were taking photos of people and, and they were taken without their permission and they were just taking pictures of everyone that they could take. And remember that the police were found to have acted unlawfully when they were doing that. They were found to have acted unlawfully. And that's what's quite scary as well. Again, that police were pushing themselves. Don't forget that also that there was the government acted unlawfully at certain times during the COVID. What did they do? Well, they just changed the law. Research and planning. Examine possible targets. Uh, emblematic. All right. These might be official buildings, places of worship, and places where crowds gather. Conducts uh, a reconnaissance. Carries out unusual surveillance, plays particular attention to security procedures. All right, uh, that one worries me greatly. Like, so if we were, if we had the people of New Zealand stand up and decide that they want to take their discussion to Parliament again because no one decided to meet with New Zealanders, no politician. Don't bring up David Seymour. David Seymour did not until his polls went down. When his polls went down, suddenly you saw him just out to the side having a chat. No parliament, no parliamentarian, even my favorite, even the man I have a huge amount of respect for, Simon O'Connor, great guy. He did not go out and speak, either, right? And don't forget, I, I've got a lot of respect for that guy. Collects tactical details to target individual places, uh, grievance, uh, extremist ideology. Whoa, collects tactical details to target individuals or places linked to their extreme ideology. Or grievance. So that's another, that's a new word. Grievance. What? So if I say that you should have one vote, and that's how it should be, that democracy should be one person, one vote, that that if you happen to be different skin color, so I'm Māori, and therefore I get more power than you, and I think that's wrong. Is that is that meaning that I would come under that? Absolutely shocking. Don't forget, by the way, that under the disinformation project, if you're brown, you weren't actually there for your own sense. You were there because white supremacists somehow corralled you and manipulated you to be in there. All right, don't forget. That's what they said. 
absolutely shocking. It was always racism, misogyny, Islamophobia. I mean, I mean, I mean, the, 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 they threw out every single leftist trope in the book that they could. It was extraordinary. Uh, shows interest in offshore terrorist activity. Now, you, you could say that if you were talking about uh, 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 ISIS, then you could say, right, that makes sense. Yeah, they showed uh, interest in offshore terrorist activity. So that is, for example, the the guy who was trying to stab people at the Newland countdown. He was very much attached to ISIS. He would have loved all their stuff. I believe he even had one of the flags at his house, I think. So he was actually showing interest there. That's fine. What about if I am following a, a TPF, which is a Christian organization? They go, they engage in discussion. They do mantras like um, save the unborn and, and things like that. They don't show yucky pictures, but they, they do that. Are they considered a terrorist activity? And does that therefore mean that we come under this? And by the way, I'm going to give you one other thing that's going to be the massive, the biggest problem about all of this anyway. Gathering knowledge, skills, and resources, uh, making weapons, yep, of course. Helps fund other violent extremist causes as well. Again, who, who tells you that they're extremists? Who says that? All right, that's what we, we need to engage in. Conducts training in military or paramilitary style survivalist tactics for no reason, no legitimate reason. Woo! Do you think that the Te Urirewa raids would happen again? Because right here, if the two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a call here. If the two Ererua raids were, were, or if you had the trainings going on in the uh area where, uh, I, can't, I can't remember, the uh, uh, Tamaiti. So Tamaiti was there and his group were there, uh, Vanessa Marshall or whoever, she, those guys there, they were engaging in firearm activity and they were marching around doing that. Uh, I think I can speak confidently and say that there's no way, no way that they would, try to apprehend them no way why because it's political because they politically would not want to be seen doing that that's that is my belief on that all right and i could be totally wrong all right uh six access nice firearms or explosive materials for no legitimate reason yep again what you know again what is that there's a lot in here i don't want to because look you're gonna this is absolutely shocking some of this stuff crazy stuff uh, declares intent to conduct a terrorist or violent extremist act. Yeah. Now, okay, violent fear. Don't cause, don't commit violence. Don't cause violence. Don't commit, like, don't commit violence. We've always said that. Those of us who who believe in standing up for New Zealand rights, the Bill of Rights, who, who believe in equality and democracy and freedom, we've always said, no, nah, no, nah, you should not be just going to violence. It's not, you don't, you should not do that it doesn't help anything all right security awareness D displays a security awareness or concern uses fake names aliases pseudonyms geez everyone i know does that that's left and right by the way those are people on the left and people on the right both they all do oh my gosh wow <laughs> okay okay sorry i have to show you this I have to show you this again. This is that. This is the uh, secret intelligence service people. This is the the I, I suppose you could say secret police of New Zealand conceals their online activities by using VPNs. Hey, so so if you use a VPN, you are part of these extremists. Is that is that what it's saying? Well, it is. They've written it down. Conceals their online activity by using VPNs. Politicians use VPNs. Everyone who's got any sense in their head and can afford it should be using a VPN. A VPN is is absolutely, it should be a basis of just protecting you. It's just natural security. Why on earth are they trying to say that, the, that VPNs are going to be bad? That is utterly shocking. I just, that's extraordinary. I mean, what the? Oh, that's insane. <laughs> Develops a cover story to hide their attentions. Okay, right. Unusual changes of behavior. Uh, banners employment without notice. Withdraws or abandons close relationships. Appears withdrawn or prone to some of Now, some of these aren't too bad, but then there could be a, a list of everything. They could they could actually show, and I'm, I'm going to give you a sad one. They could also show suicidality heavy suicidality, but it's definitely something to be aware of. If anyone does this that you love, 
then you do need to seek someone who can maybe have a chat with them, something like that. And I'm not even talking about extremism. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if someone does these things, these things are, these things would worry me. Anyone who does this, they would worry me. Okay. Uh, that's 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 someone in pain could be uh, but definitely someone who's given up somewhere along the line so you want to that is something you'd be aware of but not for extremism or stuff or maybe it is i i mean you know i'm thankful i've never really dealt with those areas as you know 20 years doing working with at risk and high risk youth a lot of violence aspects but not like this uh, but i do know that if someone's outside of their normal baseline of behavior Often you need to check that because they could be going for a real horrible time or they could actually have heavy suicidality. All right. Who can help us? The role of our communities. Oh, and Fano. Uh, again, I love Fano. I love that word, but not what they've done to it. They're, they're horrific, pushing, force feeding down communities' throats. Their insidious, sneaky way of trying to put an Aotearoa through everything has ruined a lot of that. Now, I still use those words. But I will. I use them far be, way before the academics, politicians, all the race hustlers used it as a way to shut us up. The people closest to vulnerable individuals tend to be whānau, friends, and community members. These are the people who are most likely to identify concerning behaviours. Oh, they're so, so scary. I'm thinking about. I, I am. I'm. I'm thinking about Jews when they were, you know, when they were corralled into it. Say, hey, look, we want to help. Just help us, help us help them. You know, I just, you know, all the dystopian novels that you read has the same one. And they come straight from the facts of what it is. All right. Tell NZSIS. Complete an online form confidentially, confidentially on our website, NZSIS, government NZ. Uh, it's just extraordinary just extraordinary and by the way and this is what i wanted to this is what i wanted to sort of say say to everyone okay you are going to have snitching going on all over the place it's not going to catch people it's going to just cause a whole lot of chaos and havoc and increase the divide that has been done by the politicians the academics and the nz msm the nz mainstream media and i i don't know if it's going to put me on the list somewhere i really hope it doesn't but but I love my country. I love my family. And I love my God. So I hope I hope that it doesn't put me on list. It probably would. So in order to process all of these snitchings, the the secret police basically telling you to go off and, and report Kiwis to, to the state authorities, who's going to process it? Because you won't have enough people in SIS. You won't. You will not have enough people in SIS. So that is, of course, going to be the frontline police. The frontline police are the ones who are going to have to process these. And so when the frontline police are taken off their areas and they're taken off the community lines and they're taken off murder cases, rape cases, burglary cases, robbery cases, off the ram raids, off the violent offenders, the drunks, the, the, taking them all apart from all of those community aspects, what's going to happen to our people on the street because we're already suffering from high gang violence high shootings high drug issues going on all over the country and you're going to put those police and those agents back into the the snitching of kiwis on kiwis this is not the new zealand that we grew up in this is it wasn't like this rugby was an amateur sport and, and we we didn't care what skin color you were we we flew the flag of new zealand and it wasn't a big problem whether you were maori or samoan or chinese or or malaysian it didn't matter you you did what you did and we either liked you or didn't like you based on how you behaved. This new New Zealand that we have is not a nice place. <laughs> you know, we the lights turn on at the daytime. Taxpayer money is being used to put this weird umbrella over us. 
But, you know, we, we're already getting reports of petrol stations up and down the country who are putting out-of-order signs on everything. You've got AUT that's come out with the the news that are saying that whites, yellows, reds, you know, that they'll be their their jobs in the gun. But if you're if you're a brown, then you'll be okay. So if you're Mario Pacifica, your jobs are safe. But if you're any other skin color, then you might actually lose your job. And and where have they put those? They put them into the uh, they've left those jobs in terms of uh, the big one business, the big the big roles, big topics. And I don't know I don't know if national Act, Act will probably jump up because they're clever, but they there's no heart to them. There's no moral, there's no objective morality to them. They go with whatever's going to get them a vote, and, and and they're pretty straight up with that. As a conservative, I have nowhere to put my vote. I like Democracy NZ. I'll be honest. I like the people who, I like the people that Matt has got around him, uh, and I don't know why why I haven't made that plunge yet to sort of support. But I like Matt. I like Lee. I think she's actually in here. But so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I hate saying I don't know. I usually, oh, now you move forward, you move forward, you gun it hard, you know. One thing I do know is that I love my people. And I love our nation. I love our country. I have a sentimental love for New Zealand. You know, eesh, you know. All right, we've got our flags up. You know, got a faith up. Both my grandfather, I'm so proud. When it comes to Anzac, man, I, I am out there. I don't care. I'll go to three or four Anzac parades. Not to have my face lit up, but because my grandfather's, my tipuna, my, my family was standing there proud and hard and scared to defend this nation and to build it for a better tomorrow so i i i think people like uh, vff i think uh, you know they're doing wonderful things i know that they were the target of yesterday's one so i i think there are some really good groups out there i think hey i, I think freedom uh i think the frc they're cool hey whatever you think of brian and hannah uh you know that they're, they're doing mostly good stuff um, i do i like a uh, kingdom uh, oh, sorry, Promise uh, Kingmakers. I like Kingmakers. They're uh, good people. You know, hey, we're doing something. I think I'm going to be speaking at their event in Margaret soon. So, you know, get out to them. Free Speech is having their conference this weekend. If you can, get get on there. Get on to uh, Free Speech. I, I, think they're, I think they're actually allowing for a free conference and it's at Aotea Centre. Jump in there. Uh, network, challenge. It's on Saturday. Go for it. Go in there now. I'm pretty sure. I'm very sure it's free. And if it is, Go for it. Jump in there, register, and head down there. Ply with questions. They've got some great speakers, and they're going to have it. They're going to have a great chat. And I'll say also, hey, I'm going to put my hand out as well for us. If you get a chance to, go and if if you feel led to, uh, give a bit of a donation to our page. We are volunteers. We are on the front line. Youth workers, social uh, youth worker, uh, community worker, uh, we've got uh, uh, farmers. We've got uh, or e anything you can think of that's in the community. We there, you know, and we'll, we'll we'll be straight up, you know, even if we stuff it and get things wrong, we'll be there. But uh, no, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. And I do, I I, I want you just to have a great time in your life. Be strong, be united. There will come a time that we have to forgive as well. I know that that thing going around there is never forget and no to the amnesty. I understand that. There is a time we are going to have to forgive. But we also need accountability. That's very, very important. But in the meantime, look after yourselves. Look after your family. Look after the freedom that we hold so strongly. All right. Uh, but this is time we all must come together. So in the meantime, God bless you. God bless you, Zealand.